I want to talk to you about Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This book is generating a ton of buzz. Anne and Michael at the now defunct Books on the Nightstand talked about how much buzz this was generating internally at Penguin Random House. They haven't seen the likes of which since Girl on the Train. Now, cynically, I think this is another one of those books that needs to be a thing. Sony has inked a $1.25 million deal based on a 150-page manuscript, but this isn't without precedent. Blake Crouch has sold his Wayward Pines trilogy to be turned into a TV series, which coincidentally the Duffer Brothers of Stranger Things fame wrote episodes for. But back to Girl on the Train, the comparisons are apt. There isn't an unreliable narrator per se, but you're still working with imperfect information and you're left to puzzle out how the author is going to resolve the problems that he's carefully constructing for himself. Also, like Girl on the Train, Dark Matter doesn't get bogged down in the details. This is a propulsive page turn over a novel that builds to an almost over-the-top crescendo. There's no time to linger. Everything is moving by quickly. And while I could have stood to, you know, taking a closer look at certain plot points, there is no time. Everything whips past like scenery on a roller coaster ride. This is the IKEA of literary fiction. It doesn't carry the classic stylings of an Eames chair or a Baroque Louis XIV. It doesn't have the modern currency of an Aaron. Nope, this is a Poang. And that's not a bad thing. The Poang, along with the Billy bookcase, is probably Ikea's most popular item. It sells well, it does really well, it's really well liked. But much like the Poang, in 20 years it had long been kicked to the curb and forgotten about. This is the perfect book for right now. But enough with the chair analogies, tell me about the book. All right, so our protagonist, Jason Destin, is a happy man at 40, He's settled into a quiet life. He's a physics professor at a Chicago college. He's raising his son, Charlie, and he's living with his wife, Daniela. His life has a quiet routine. And maybe there's a, a tinge of ennui and a slight tickle of disappointment as far as where he's ended up in his career. One night, he goes out to celebrate with an old friend who's won a major prize. It's the Pavia Prize for Physics. And he ends up suffering a bit of condescension at his friend's hands, who's all but said, those who can do, those who can't teach. And he can't help feel a little bummed out on his way home, walking back from the bar, and wondering, maybe, what if he had taken that road not traveled, when suddenly he's jumped by a masked man, taken on a car ride, and knocked unconscious. When Jason wakes, he finds himself in a lab. He's the returning hero. He has limitless resources at his disposal. He has been recognized for his incredible achievements in physics, and he's working at the cutting edge of science, to the point where he has warranted the attention of some very important people. But this Jason has made some critical, different choices in his life. There is no Charlie. He never married or settled down with Danielle and has instead single-mindedly pursued his vision of science. And therein lies the story. It's up to this Jason to try and find his way home. And we're off and running. This is a quantum mechanic. It's a wonderful life. Throw in a love story from Time Traveler's Wife with all the thriller and danger of The Man from Primrose Lane. Both fantastic novels I highly recommend you check out. Throw in a dollop of fringe, let it cool overnight in the refrigerator, take it out, pare it down to a single morsel, and voila, you have dark matter. I really enjoyed this book. It's a relatively short and quick read that just goes by very quickly, one or two sittings, and in no time it's done. Try to ignore some of the gaping plot holes which tend to build as you get closer to the end, but nonetheless, I think this would make a great summer tentpole movie. Just sit back, enjoy the ride. Like I said, I enjoyed it immensely, and I followed it up with another really great time travel type read. Anyway, I hope you guys have had a great reading week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.